Hi, welcome back to the channel. So a different uh, location today for the video and this is where I'll be probably filming for the next, well, future videos to be honest. So we're going to have a look at this. This is the Fanatec Club Sport F1 wheel. This is the new version, this is the V2. So this came out a few weeks ago. Uh, I ordered this from Fanatec and it took six days, did it? Six, yes, yeah, six days it took and that's including coming through customs. Uh, just a quick little thing to tell you about, because I see loads of comments on Facebook and people saying how much does it cost if I buy someone from Fanatec. So whatever the price is that you see on the screen when you go in, you need to take 20% of that. They'll automatically, the 20% will come off that, which is the German tax. Now that'll happen automatically when you go through the till. You don't need to worry about that. So whatever it comes to at the end, you will pay 20% and that's including the shipping, so you'll pay 20% on top of everything, plus £12. The £12 fee is the fee from the carrier. And on this occasion, it's UPS. So they use UPS and they'll charge you £12, and that's for the transaction. They'll then sort out the money. So you pay UPS, they'll pay the money to the government, and you're all happy. It normally comes out roughly to what you see the price. So if the price is two sixty nine euros, you're probably going to pay two sixty nine, two seventy, something like that euros plus your twelve pounds, and just convert it back. This came in about two hundred and fifty odd quid, uh, two sixty. I think I'm I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with the wheel. I absolutely love this thing. I've wanted one for quite a long time. I was trying to get a few second hand ones, and they either looked scruffy because all the Alcantaras came off. Or I tried to buy one off Facebook Marketplace and the guy with a tall tool, which tends to be the way on there. So I didn't buy it. So I'm really glad I didn't now. So the difference is that we've got, now got magnetic paddles and we've also got another row of LEDs here. So let me just take it off and show it you at the back. Sorry. So on the back you have your normal QR slider, comes QR1, this comes with it, comes in a separate box, you just have to screw it on yourself, it comes with the four bolts. It's really easy, you just screw the four bolts on and you're ready to go. I really like the fit and finish of this thing. The Alcantara on the sides isn't my favourite thing. I have to race with gloves because I, I, I show you my hand. I have a skin condition, well, and it's not made any better by driving because I'm doing a lot of driving, I do quite a lot of laps a day. So I have to wear gloves anyway, so it's not really a problem for me. Um, the face plate feels like it's, I don't know what it's made of. I think it's just plastic really. Is it, I don't know if it's metal or plastic. It's difficult to tell. It's not cold, but it has been running quite a long. I've just been racing with it. You have the three top buttons there, three top buttons on the other side. And then you've got the two center buttons. You have your, I can't remember what that's, the, your control here, which is uh, like a joystick. And then you have the funky switch of course and then at the bottom you have three buttons you can obviously configure these to whatever you want on whatever game you're using this is for f1 so i have set this up for f1 and i probably only will race f1 with this because uh, i tend to use other, other wheels for different things but i really do like the wheel let me just i was running this for f1 now, there's no doubt about the fact that this is a better quality wheel. There's absolutely no doubt about that. This is a Fanatec, um, I think, I can't remember what this thing's called. It's a, it's a 2.5X Formula wheel. Um, and as you can see, it's a Xbox compatible wheel. And this obviously has far more features. It has the rotary, rotary dials on here, and it has the encoders up here. Now, this is the reason I'm stopping using it, because I have this set up to use I had my bias set up on here and my diff on this side and I keep you catch them all the time because the gap here isn't that big and it's a closed in wheel and if you look at this one it's open bottom which means it's for me it's more comfortable to use there's no doubt about the fact that this is a better quality wheel it's got a carbon plate on it and stuff and it it's a more I think this is about 370 380 pounds uh, I may sell this now I'm not sure but I probably will sell it I can't see me using it much anymore but it is a nice wheel absolutely nice wheel very similar at the back same on eight get shifters and the QR one slider so 
also I obviously run with a McLaren GT three wheel which you've probably seen before in another video and I have the quite not well very nice um, Porsche wheel this is very expensive it comes in about 650 I think by the time you've paid for everything because it comes in parts really nice wheel so people don't like maybe say you don't want to buy into the Fanatec ecosystem because it's a problem and then you're limited to what you get but aren't you like that with most things I know if you get Simic Cube and stuff and you get the USB and they plug in the bottom I'm more than happy with it to be honest uh, having the Fanatec stuff I've, I've not had a problem the only problem I did have was and you probably had this if you were on a DD1 the wheelbase continually um, told me it had done too many revolutions and I'd have to reset the wheel. Now, it was a problem and I was a little bit annoyed about it. I contacted Fanatec and to be fair it was not even 10 hours later and then the solution, they sent me the file and I just updated it with the file they sent me and it's been absolutely fine since. So that's all I can do. I can only comment on what I find from Fanatec and I've had no problems whatsoever. And as you can see it's all Fanatec, I have Fanatec pedals. Um, but now I use a button box down here to use. I have this button box and I have my bias set up on here and stuff. And I find it much easier than having it like that. So the wheels basically, I think I've just got camera set up on the top. Most of the stuff are on this button box here. I have my camera on here. Uh, sorry, I have my ERS and my um, overtake on there. DRS buttons are all on there. And then I have pit buttons and basically not much more and then the other stuff's on here so i can't catch anything but yeah if you're looking for a formula one wheel or uh, just any type of wheel really because you can race anything on this i won't drift with it but you can race most things with it and if you are looking for one of these wheels i think they're great value i think it's one of the best value wheels they do the mclaren wheel is fantastic and it comes in at 199 for the the mclaren wheel but the McLaren wheel is, they're fairly, oh, I like the rubber grips at the side, but it's quite plasticky feeling and it doesn't come with one of these on the back. So I put this on, I paid another 100 quid for one of these. It comes with a plastic, one of these, which screws into here. Now the problem you've got with that one is, it's not gonna be it's not compatible with the D1, so it knocks down the torque and only lets you drive with half the torque. So I bought one of these and, and to be fair the difference with the wheel is massive when you fitted it. It really is a much better wheel. But I'm now at 300 with this which has actually cost more than that wheel. But it's a nice wheel. So quick tour of the wheels. That's all I've got left. I saw the BMW one I had and I also had a Formula Carbon wheel which I didn't really like that much. So I sold that one and went on to... Um, this that I've just bought so I sold two and replaced it with one um, and I'm happy with it this is probably my favorite wheel but I can't race Formula One with this so thanks ever so much for watching hope you like the video you'll have seen I've put a couple of videos up over the last couple of days and you might think what the hell are them and all it is is to try and set my camera up so I can get an angle for when I want to show racing or show races I've done I don't want to do screenshots the idea is I'll do this, I'll get the footage and then I'll do a commentary over the top when we're done and then that's what it'll look like. It's too much faffing around for my opinion to try and get triple screens and then get it off. I know there's ways of doing it, I can use OBS and all the rest of it, I just don't want to do that. So I'm going to record it this way so you're going to see really what I see. So you'll see the steering wheel at the top of it, the screen, and then afterwards I'll do a commentary over the top and let you know. I'm also going to be doing quite a lot of stuff for Gran Turismo 7 when it comes out. I've got that's all set up ready to record so I can do some racing with that and show you the game. But yeah, that's basically where, we, where we're at. Uh, I've got some more reviews coming up on bits of tackle that are connected to here that I wanted to show you. Um, and different things, one of them being this here this is a pro race 2 from a company called sim projects it comes in at roughly 90 quid and it gives you basically 
all the information you can have your lights and stuff i'm going to do a review on that i'll tell you now i wouldn't touch it with a large pole but we'll do a review on it i'll have a review on that in the next week or so um, i i personally think it's garbage but there we go i've also I'm going to do a video because I don't know if every, most people know about Simo, but then when I read on the forums on Facebook, it seems to be hit and miss whether they do. So I'm going to do a quick overview because I have a lot of things attached to it. I have a book kicker, two under my seat. I have two front transducers under the front of the pedals running off a separate amp. I then have the wind simulator and I have seven or six or seven different LED stroke button boxes attached to it and I'll just show you I just wanted to do a video to show how easy it is to set the whole thing up and you can have it up and running in this thing when I stripped it down and that to rebuild it again it probably took me 10 minutes to get it all up and running again so there we go I've waffled on too much thank you so much for watching have a fantastic day